Call to order at uh, seven o two p.m. And uh, first order of business then for the, for the evening is uh, whether we have any um, additions or corrections to the agenda. Does any have anyone have any that they would like to um, that they would like to make? If not, then we will move on to our first order of business, which is the approval of the minutes of the January 19th, 2021 board meeting. And I will bring those up on the screen here. Janie, excellent work as always. Um, if we don't have any questions or corrections, then I would look for a motion to approve. I so move. Second. Stro moves. Heinzelman seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Okay, and that takes us up to the financial reports. I am going to hop over here to a different tab where I have the financial reports open. Okay, uh, a couple items to draw attention to um, off the top here. Uh, we do continue to inch ever closer to completing um, the property tax revenue, it's just such an unusual year. Um, I think we're probably close enough now to comfortably say that we're not going to have um, a major shortfall. Um, starting to begin the process here of uh, taking a look at, um, you know, what we'll be doing uh, potentially as far as uh, acquiring the, the virtual servers that we budgeted to get. Um, so, but that's just very much at the outset. Um, uh, Matt, you and I did have a chance to read. I do need to get you the rest of that uh, paperwork as far as what they proposed for us. Um, very much looking forward to having uh, your thoughts on that as well. Thanks. Uh, I mean, uh, Eric, do we have 97 and a half percent of our tax revenue in? Yep. Is that so, an hour or, or was that about right? If in the, a... In a normal year, I would say that this is um, pretty much it, finito. Um, and I wouldn't expect to see any more money coming in. This isn't a normal year and the, the process has been um, really stretched out and protracted uh, because of the delay that um, the county let taxpayers take advantage of, which, you know, don't get me wrong, is. I think a great program, a great thing to have made available. It does make predicting things a little bit more challenging. Um, I would say we'll probably get most of that remaining 24,000. Um, we were off a little bit last year as well. We were off a little bit. I, I would, I think we'll come, I think we'll land somewhere within a five, within $5,000. Um, when all is said and done. Okay. So the amount that we're short is how much, Eric? The difference uh, it is, yeah. 24,534. Uh, okay. Okay, and then scrolling down. Um, Eric, um, real quick, the, on the, uh, well, actually, never mind. You, a rental fee, a, yeah, rental fees. Mm -hmm. I know this is a, a goofy year for this, but do you have any idea? And I don't know if, they'll live, if we'll ever even see them, but do you have any idea how the number of in unpaid fees is? I, I know people haven't been in to pay fees, but do you have any idea what, if it all worked out, we would be owed? Um, as, as far as what the, the balance currently owed uh, stands yeah. at, um, I don't know that off the top of my head. I 
can have uh, Martha or Katie take a look into that and get that number. Yeah, no hurry. Just be curious to know. Sounds good. We'll we'll get that. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to scroll down to the next next page here. Okay. A uh, couple items to draw quick attention to. Um, overall, January does tend to be one of the um, months with larger total expenses, um, partly because November and December, the expenses tend to be lower. Um, part of that's just the cycle of, of purchasing, such as for materials. There, there aren't a lot of materials that are released, not a lot of titles that are coming out in November, December. Most publishers will put things out in September or October. And then if they can't get them out, then they'll hold on to them until the start of the new year. Um, so purchasing for materials picks way up uh, as, as well as uh, it can be a challenge to get work done, um, contracted as well during December obviously. So th there tends to be a bit of an uptick in that as well. So um, those are always some factors to consider when we're looking at January. We did also have a couple other items here um, that are particular to this year. Uh, one line I'm going to highlight here is the um, building maintenance. Most of that number of that 4,975, uh, I think 4,200 of it um, actually relates to the, uh, the expense of replacing the uh, door um, automatic openers, uh, which was work that we had done uh, in December. But uh, when we get the bill kind of depends on the company. Um, you know, some, some folks, some companies, you know, they'll be very on the spot. But, you know, there, there are other companies that you know, it'll be a, a month, month and a half before we get that final invoice. So this one was a little bit behind the work. That's what constitutes uh, that higher total there. Uh, another one where we got a larger bill here this past month is under the utilities line. Um, and most of that uh, 2245 uh, represents the um, initial setup of the uh, Granite uh, telecommunications, the new phone system. Uh, that one was delayed because we had a bit of a back and forth um, related to some of the expenses that were on that bill and wanted to be certain that we got all our questions answered. Lindy did a really nice job uh, following through on that and making sure as uh, sometimes telecommunications companies can be particularly prone to do, uh, there wasn't anything um, you know, trying to be slipped in there. As with the uh, phone bills themselves, the telecommunications companies tend to have a lot of little lines uh, with sometimes somewhat inscrutable charges. And Eric, was that was that contemplated in the fifteen thousand dollar budget number? Uh, no. No. Okay. No, we had not. We had not anticipated having to change the phone system. Um, our uh, provider, this fiscal year. Uh, that was something that as the year progressed, uh, we kept getting hit with new charges mm -hmm. um, from our previous provider. And just looking at the numbers, um, we, we determined that if we could make the change, it was going to be advantageous. It was starting to get a little crazy. Got it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not second guessing the, the decision. It's more just from a budget standpoint. So do we still think the, um, you know, given that we're 70% of the way through the budget at the end of January, is that, a, is that, is there any reason for um, potential overage there or any concern for potential overage? Uh, if we go over a bit on the, uh, on the budget, uh, for the utilities, it should not be by a lot. Nothing meaningful. Um, okay, Th good enough. No. Thank you. Yep. No, and it's it's pretty close to where it should be. We're, let's see, um, at the end of January, we're three fourths of the way. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's yeah, that's that's nine that's nine months. So it's about where it should be. Yep. Um, Okay, 
Uh, any other questions on the finances? Okay, if, uh, if not, then I would look for a motion uh, I would look for a motion to approve. And then after that, uh, Martha uh, tells me that uh, she has some numbers on overdue fines uh, that she can share with us as well. Eric, I have a couple of questions. The thing is, I'm not, well, I'm not sure that I'm in the right. I, uh, I'm working off an iPad and I can't really read these things. But so I have two questions though on on money matters. One is mm -hmm. when you list tech services, what would be an example of tech services? Oh, the tech services supplies. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the items in the the tech services supplies would be things such as. Uh, the barcodes that go onto the books, they would be the labels that go onto the books, they would be okay. the book dust jackets when we need to purchase those. Yeah. Um, things that would be related to um, keeping things well organized um, and appropriately jacketed on the shelves. Okay. So um, do, replacement DVD do cases. With, it doesn't have anything to do with computers and stuff like that. It's like office. No. No, um, the, the technical services in, in this case, and yeah, I, I can see how that's a misleading name for, uh, for that line. And unfortunately, um, the, and, I, and I understand the reason, reason for it because you don't want somebody trying to repurpose a, a budget line and making it something that it wasn't originally um, because that gets confusing from an auditing standpoint and a transparency standpoint, but um, Long, long and short of it is, is I, I see how that line uh, is perhaps confusingly named, but uh, I don't have the ability to change it. Okay. Uh, the technical services here relates to um, what would happen in a library tech services department, which uh, in a library organization would be focused on uh, cataloging, uh, organizing collections, uh, things like that. Okay. And then what is the Museum of Bad? Uh, the Museum of Bad Art. Oh, it didn't say art. It just said the Museum of Bad. I think that is under the, the checks. That is a, uh, um, I believe they're out on the, the East Coast and is exactly uh, what, uh, what it says it is on the bottle. Um, it is a museum of bad art, and, and we were able. <laughs> well, they do. Uh, they do very very good uh, work. Um, they are. Um, they offer programs and the opportunity to uh, to contract for programs, and we went in with a a group of other libraries to. Um, be able to do a couple programs. Let me find the link to them for you here, Cal, so we can. Um, they're they're very is, good at bad art. Is that what they Yeah, I. this is Katie <laughs> speaking. I. They're located near Boston. I have visited the Museum of Bad Art. It's like in a really dingy basement uh, of an old building, um, but it's hysterical seeing the art that's there. And I, I haven't seen any of their programming that they do around it but just popping in for for a quick visit was absolutely hilarious so sounds yeah, like my and, kind of place yeah oh it's it, it's frightening the stuff that they have on display it is truly frightening yeah looking at their website it's it's truly frightening is a good word for it what did we provide or what did they provide us with um they offer uh programming so um, similar to other art institutions, they, they do programming associated with the, the art that they house. And in uh, somewhat challenging times, I, I think that uh, a good uh, um, laugh is probably not a terrible thing these days. Well, 
is this art something that someone created and they thought it was wonderful <laughs> and then everybody else is making fun of it? Is that what this is? Um, or does it end up? I don't know. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the context, uh, context of it. I think they, they find art from like estate sales or thrift stores. Um, I think some people may also willingly donate their own art um, or they may see art that they made when they were much younger and, and went, oh God. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't, I think they have several ways of collecting, of, of uh, collecting the bad art and a lot of it is a lot of it th that they had on display when i visited was really really terrible celebrity portraits not that the celebrities did the portraits themselves but portraits of celebrities like there was molly ringwald there were some really terrifying michael jackson uh paintings there were some really frightening elvis paintings um i don't remember where they all came from but uh it, it was quite a sight. Well, it sounds like bad is subjective, but was the was the programming successful? <laughs> Did we like their programming? Did the kids like the programming or whomever participated? I don't believe that the bad art programs have been held okay. uh, yet. DVD. Is that correct, Jillian? <laughs> That's correct. We have four programs scheduled over the course of June and July, and we're partnering with five other local small library so they only the museum of bad art um, only allows small libraries to do this so they only offer it for um for this ability for us basically essentially if it's a large library they they won't do a zoom program so it's pretty unique cool. opportunity that we get to do it and so, so what's the format of the programs are they going to come by zoom or what yeah, but it's all virtual. Um, they're going to do some curated information about their what they have in their exhibits, as well as sort of what they're about. There's like one of the first programs is a, just an intro of who they are and what they do and stuff like that. So we'll we will find out about this in one of your your yeah newsletters over the internet, right? Yep, that'll be in the summer. Okay, good. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, and I would particularly like to highlight uh, on this one that uh, what a, a great job Jillian did here as far as uh, um, spotting and um, snagging this opportunity to uh, join with these other libraries and, and do this joint program. Um, you know, I, I think as much as there's um, things that we miss with uh, all the meetings tending to be digital, um, as the one this evening is, I, I do think that there's looking forward some upside to being able to do joint meetings or um, joint programming um, like this um, initiative shows. Um, I think Jillian has done a great job as, as far as pulling it all together. So Thank well you. done. Thank you. We're looking outside the box. Yeah, it's a cool idea. Yeah, Jillian, you must go on weirdwebsites.com or something. Like that. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is just from a listserv from Rails. You know, somebody posted out there that they were interested in getting somebody to partner with them, and I just like immediately contacted. So awesome. uh, I hope this will lead to other good things, is really kind of the intent. So, okay. So I believe. Rewinding a few minutes that we're still working on the financials. Yeah, yes, I think we're we are. So if we, uh, if we don't have any further discussion or questions on those, then I would look for a motion to approve those. I so move. Second. Do you need two, you need two different votes on that or are you going to combine? Um, financials we can do all in, uh, all in one go and then we'll jump to the checks. Okay. Matt, did you second? I did. Okay, thank you. All right. As its finances, we do a roll call vote. Trustee Jurch. Aye. Trustee Stroh. Aye. Trustee Meyerhoff. Aye. 
Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Trustee Heinzelman. <clears throat> John, you're muted. Sorry, aye. Thanks, no worries. Uh, Trustee Brockett. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. And that takes us up to the checks. Oh, and yeah. make sure I've got the right tab up here. There we go. And I do have uh, a couple checks here to draw attention to, but most of the highlights were we, uh, in the finances, I think we already covered with um, the reports. Okay. So in the checks. Nothing voided. Nothing voided on this go round. Um, usually when those void, when the voided checks happen, uh, it's, it's related to um, a really long invoice, uh, most frequently the one to Amazon or Baker and Taylor, but neither of them seem to have triggered a void check this month. So the rainforest earns the reprieve. I'm going to be a bit more efficient, I guess. Okay. And actually, I think I went over pretty much everything that uh, I had here to highlight. And I don't really have any other notes uh, to draw attention to beyond uh, Granite and Stanley and the large expenses there. Uh, do I have any questions on any of the checks? No questions. If not, then I would look for a motion to approve. I so move. I second. Stroh moves. Meyerhoff seconds. Yeah. Uh, so we will again do a roll call. Trustee Jurch. Aye. Trustee Stroh. Aye. Trustee Meyerhoff. Aye. Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Trustee Heinzelman. Aye. Trustee Brockett. Aye. Carries unanimously. And that takes us up to committee reports. And we have two committees that met uh, this past month. Um, the first of those going in alphabetical order uh, was the building and grounds committee. <laughs> Let's see, yeah. Janie, I believe you're the. Here. Mm -hmm. Just FYI, the, your agenda says all the committees did not meet, but I assume you're going to say building and grounds and human resources did meet. Did finance also meet? Oh, wait, am I looking? Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to get the word met in there. I must have accidentally deleted that when I was shuffling the committees around to show which had met and which did not. Um, so building and grounds and human resources, the two at the top there, are the, the two that met, um, looking at the agenda in the packet. Um, okay. And Janie, ah. very excitingly, you are the chair of both. <laughs> All right. This is uncomfortable because I have no memory of the B and G meeting. It was about the driveway. It's about the parking it? lot. Yeah. Parking lot. Okay, now I remember. Yeah, um, yeah. The, we we met about the parking lot and uh, we discussed uh, whether or not to add another space by taking out the island, which would re mean removable removal of a maple tree. And we were gonna uh, ask the village about not only that, but about uh, including our parking lot plus the part of Oak Street that is at the west end of our parking lot, which is also in bad shape because it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to um, fix the parking lot if the road right next to it is also crumbling, which it is. And uh, so last I heard either you, Eric, or Lindy, I, I would assume was going to talk to 
some people at the village about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've done that or not yet, but uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping that right about now is when the village um, goes out for bids for road work. And so for us to jump in on that, and of course we'd pay for a part of it, but um, it would be much more cost efficient for us to do, do it along with them than to do it on our own. So yeah. we'll, and we'll let the village go out for bids and then we will probably have the work done sometime spring, early summer, something yeah. like that. And pick up some economy of scale. Um, you know, having someone, a company come in and have their, you know, machinery around the, the village for, for most of the summer doing um, quite a lot of road work. Uh, you know, they've already got everything that they need here uh, that's different expense wise than having to have somebody come in just for our project. Um, and I can provide a, a quick update on that. Uh, I did have a chance to get a hold of Jeff Hansen and Mike Croak over at the village. Uh, we are going to be able to get in on uh, that bid that the village puts out each year. Um, I'm just waiting for the word from uh, from Jeff as far as when that will be going out. Like a lot of things um, over the, the past year, it's been delayed a, a bit just by things generally being an, a bit unsettled and unusual uh, over the past year. Um, so ordinarily it would have been out uh, probably within the last week or two, but it seems this year that it'll be out towards the end of February, which is still in plenty of time to, uh, for the village to get the work done. Um, we do also need to apply to the ABR for a, um, not a uh, change to the variance. Uh, I, I found that um, in talking with Jeff and Mike that the new um, district that is intended to uh, apply to municipal uh, construction such as village hall, the schools, uh, the library uh, is now in effect so that we are no, now no longer operating under a uh, special variance um, in a residential district, which, and this is key if you were ever one of the folks that got to um, go over to the ABR in the past means that we do not have to ask them for any variances for uh, impervious um, or impermeable <laughs> surface. I thought you would enjoy that, Cal. I know you were there for those. Uh, we got chewed out at one point. Um, yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, were, we were called an eyesore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, I, I think that was partly because we had, had a, at the time, because of the way that we were zoned, we had to go over there and talk to them for every little thing. Um, including, I think at one point, like a uh, nine foot square patch of, of limestone. So um, we won't have to do that again uh, because it'll change the appearance um, in a small way to uh, take a tree out and fill in that, uh, uh, that area in the parking lot. We do need to go through the ABR and I'm working on the, the packet for that. So that looks like it will be the April ABR meeting. We don't have to get approval on that before uh, we're included in the bid. You just have to get it before we do the work. What is the ABR? Architectural uh, Board of Review. Okay. So they are the keepers of the town uh, aesthetic. Okay. So, um, right. yeah. The, the PCZBA handles um, all the zoning and uh, then the architectural board of review is, uh, you know, the, the, the guidelines and dictate um, appearance, basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's update there. Um, any other questions on the parking lot? Otherwise, I think we can jump over to the HR. Which is still you, Janie. Yeah, how did I get to be chairman of that one? I know. How did you get to be chairman what? of them both? I don't remember Wait how we let that happen. All right. Uh, okay, well, we met last week and uh, 
we talked about um, the refinement of the timeline and the plan for getting Eric's uh, yearly review uh, completed um, in a timely fashion. Okay, so we have a, I believe you included it, Eric, in the, uh, in the packet, you had dates of a timeline, and um, I don't know if this is the right time to, to ask everyone to, um, to weigh in. Should we save that for later, or should we do that now? Well, um, I think we can segue into that. It's uh, the one and only item under new business. So we go straight from the HR committee report to that. Okay. So I, I think we can just go from one to the other here. Um, All right. So the basic itinerary for uh, completing the director's um, annual evaluation is included in your, in your packet. So uh, for the month of February, uh, the, the goal there uh, boils down to uh, the HR committee letting the full board know that the process has started, that they have begun uh, gathering together thoughts and opinions on director's per, um, performance over the past year, and that the full board is invited to provide feedback and participate. So uh, the, the form that that takes then uh, over the next month is that the head of um, the committee usually, but I think we had agreed that, uh, Kathy, I think you'd volunteered to be yeah, the I one doing the evaluation. Yeah, I apologize, you're a chairperson. I didn't, I thought Scott had been, and I thought we were without a chairperson, so. All I can say is that by being chairperson, if that means that I can, tell you and Tricia to do the work, I'm down with it. Yep. That's your first official duty? Yeah. <laughs> so Kathy, uh, with help from Tricia, is going to be gathering the information. Tricia, I believe you're working on a uh, survey form. Is that correct? Yeah, I wanted to get uh, the board's opinion on uh, the best route of communication um, if I were to email survey to all board members, um, would that be sufficient and also compliant, you know, with the process since I'm brand new to this? I just want to make sure that, that it's good to go. If I were to email survey out to all board members regarding the board input and on the director's evaluation, if that would be acceptable for everyone. Yeah, Tricia, if I could just jump ahead of this, that might help mm -hmm. people answer that question. Um, the goal of the committee, first of all, we had, we, the committee will meet one more time and uh, act within executive session, which means we will meet without the director present. We'll, we did discuss Eric's uh, goals for the past year and his response to that. So we will meet and then meanwhile, and I think we can share tonight, or Eric, you can share tonight what your goals were so that the whole board knows that. Um, and then I'm gonna ask all of you to let me know by the end of February, your input regarding the director's evaluation. And Tricia very helpfully uh, asked if she could help develop a survey to facilitate that feedback. In the past, it's been kind of like pulling teeth to get trustees to do it on a timely fashion, which has caused the director's report to be very delayed, which we do not want to have happen in the, in the, 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 the future. So other than uh, Trisha reflecting on the goals that Eric set, um, then if you wanna make any suggestions or members of the board, if you have any thoughts on what would help guide you to uh, feedback and, and surveys, questions, yes, but obviously a comment section. Um, and if you're brand new to the board, that doesn't mean you don't have observations or questions or whatever. So please, because it will then go back to the committee to draft the review, share the review with Eric and then follow up to the full board. So it's, it'll be going back and forth for a few months now. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that or in some way that Tricia would be helpful to you? 
I'm just very grateful for Tricia to do this because um, by giving us a survey, um, it, it certainly gives some framework to our thoughts. I always have a real hard time gathering thoughts for this. Um, I, I'm great at evaluating people when I have papers to grade, but Eric, I don't have any papers to grade from you. So, <laughs> and besides, you know, like orders of magnitude more about your job than I do. So I don't feel qualified necessarily to, you know, <laughs> to weigh in on how you're doing. And so Tricia, I, I do appreciate this. My pleasure. I think um, just my initial thought process is to structure the survey in terms of the board's ideas of what the director's goals should be. Just looking at the past review, there were three main goals um, of which Eric was evaluated on. So I think we should get input from the board of what those goals should look like and also input from Eric on what his what he perceives his goals to be in running the library um, and how we can blend those together in uh, and see what everybody's opinion is. And that's just kind of what I have initially, but I would love to hear feedback from the board and, and from you, Eric, too, and um, even from the staff um, as to best uh, do this process to evaluate and, and set forth a good good vision for the library for the next year. Yeah, actually a past uh, board member, committee member, Scott Butler had always talked about bringing in the staff, which I was, we were giving Tricia the background on this performance review, it's probably, probably done this plan for two or three years and with the intention of having it expand to including staff feedback and so forth. So we, this would be a good time to begin to integrate that if at all possible. Um, it's, that it's sounds a, great. John, I'm sorry. I said, sounds great. Okay. Um, so Trisha, if you want to give that some thought and if you have questions for Eric or get back to me, anybody else, just uh, this will be, We'll be kind of winging at this time, but we'll learn from the process and it'll just continue to improve. So um, we am I permitted to am I permitted to email you and the staff directly uh, on this issue or do I I just want to make sure with the Open Meetings Act, I'm, I'm so new to it. I don't want to be in violation. I'm a rule follower. I would suggest working with the staff via Eric. Mm -hmm. um, and Eric, what do you think about that? You kind of cringed on that. Well, I'm kind of thinking it, soliciting staff uh, feedback from the staff would be new territory. So I'm just kind of like mentally, um, you know, th thinking in terms of the best way to approach that in terms of um, feedback since ordinarily, um, you know, for the, the sake of good organization and try and um, have any requests um, go through through me, but that's probably one where that would be not the best way to handle that. Um, it would be, to put it mildly, a little bit awkward. Well, I guess I'm um, just, I just I want you to be part of the process, but obviously in the appropriate role. So maybe mm -hmm. you and Trisha could just talk about. I mean, I I think you would want yeah, to know let me, what it is the staff's being yeah. asked. Although the the information should you're not yeah. the funnel for that. Yeah, no, and that that's um, probably uh, yeah an exception to the rule. There, I, I shouldn't be the funnel. I think to performance feedback that would not be that would not be helpful. Well, if uh, we do it in a survey format, um, then we kind of get objective data and we could structure it to you know where we would know where the feedback is coming in. Mm -hmm. But really, if you look at our meetings, we don't have a whole lot of other community input from constituents. So it would be valuable, I think, to get the staff's feedback since they're here in the meetings and, you know, we, but we'll curtail it and organize it in a way so that it's not uh, like coming as a, as a work order from you or something like that. <laughs> well, yeah. we have, um, we have solicited um, community feedback, not specifically for Eric's performance, but of, of the library in general and various aspects of the library in the past. So it, it's not as if we uh, don't seek that out occasionally. 
I'm trying to think, was it, what, a year or two ago that we... We do that through, it's an every other year survey, which I think we're overdue it because of COVID. So yeah, yeah. we'll be catching up with that at some point. Okay. Um, but um, to back up regarding the Open Meetings Act, uh, Tricia, um, if for you to send out the, the survey um, as a document or a link to the, the full board, uh, you know, that, that is fine. And then for individual trustees to send you back feedback, again, that's fine. Where you get into trouble with Open Meetings Act is where you end up with um, discussion or decision making uh, as a group. So if you have, you know, somebody comments on, on something and then somebody else comments on it in, in a group email, that's where you end up with um, open Meeting Act um, violations and problems. But if it's just one person sending out to the group and then individuals sending back, that's fine. It's not a discussion. Nothing's getting uh, resolved or decided. It's just information gathering. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so Tricia, you're gonna work on that survey. Eric, can she communicate that to me or is that an open meeting issue? Uh, should not be, um, or, or we no, could... it's that, 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 that's fine. No, that, I'm that, just wondering, that, that is let fine. me, let me make a suggestion there. Mm -hmm. Since HR said we were going to meet again, and Janie, this is, this is up to you. Um, we are, we are supposed to meet once before the month, end of February to have a executive session discussion within the committee. If Tricia had her survey at that time, we could all discuss it and, and tweak it and then follow up with that to the trustees and key staff individual and then get that feedback turned around within a week or so and work on the review. How does that sound to Trish and John? And I think John was there too, is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plan on that. Let's schedule the next executive session. Yeah. I'll have this draft survey ready. The committee can provide feedback and then uh, we'll distribute it to the board after that if you're comfortable with it. Great. Great. Sounds good. And that's you said towards the towards the end of the month here in February. Um well, uh, maybe like the end of next week ish. Sounds good. I will send out a doodle poll focused on setting up a meeting at that time. Yeah, like the, in that range. The 24th through the 26th, maybe. Sounds good. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, just a quick question. Forward looking, when will goals be set for the next fiscal year? Uh, they'll be set as part of this process. Okay. Um, so just, just another thought. Um, does I, I don't know if the um, review includes a competencies section, so sort of above and beyond specific measurable goals. There's also kind of a, this competency piece. Um, I don't know if the goals for this past year contemplated COVID, right? But competencies like agility and innovation and things like that, I think would also be really valuable to collect maybe this yes. year and next year. Um, there, there's a, a competency section in there. There's also a, uh, an accomplishments section to just provide a general breakdown as far as uh, what's been done over the past year. You're spot on that, um, you know, we had done most of the work as far as um, the, the, the discussion and conversations last year as, as far as that, uh, evaluation and setting those goals. So they look uh, pretty, um, they, yeah, they, they didn't fare well against COVID, some of them. So there were uh, a few goals that were related to things that we end up, ended up not being able to do at all uh, over the, the past uh, fiscal year, unfortunately. But um, how about if I, I send you the, uh, uh, the blank copy of the, of the evaluation uh, so that you can see what we use uh, in the different sections there. Uh, sure, would that's that be helpful? You know, publicly available. I, I'd love oh, to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, and, Thank you. and um, just in this, just 
to have a really frank discussion about this. Uh, the, the director's review was, in my opinion, badly delayed two years in a row. So I don't want that to happen again. It's not fair to Eric, it's not fair to the library. And it's been such an extraordinary year, we don't need to make it any more thoughtful. Um, however, I'm certainly open to redesigning the form. I think it should always be looked at every few years and we have a, a, a new board and a lot of great ideas and input. So unless there's big objection through this mini process that we're talking about, um, I'd like it to run its course. It's difficult to evaluate somebody on a evaluation that's changed for the vast majority of this year. So let's do what we can with a good survey and feedback and then revisit this whole topic maybe in August and say, what can we do to improve the process so that next year we can stay on the same schedule um, and make improvements and agree on them and, and technique, but without delaying the process. Um, any thoughts on that? I agree. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Any um any questions any other questions comments thoughts on our one item of new business for the meeting otherwise um i think we can move on to the next item on the agenda okay um we have the the one item under old business the the same item that we we always have um and have had uh, for the last couple of years because it's an ongoing project, which is the capital uh, project. Uh, don't really have anything uh, new to report on that other than that we are continuing to work on uh, laying the groundwork to relaunch that, um, to breathe life into a currently dormant campaign. And hopefully those plans will have a chance to really um, get going here soon. That would be nice. And the COVID numbers certainly um, of late have been headed in the right direction, which is nice. So uh, then that would take us up to the director's report. A uh, couple items there that I do want to draw particular attention to. Uh, one being the Summer Reading Club, which we are now in the process of planning. Um, with uh, looking at the Summer Reading Club, uh, just not knowing for certain exactly what if any mitigation might be in effect, uh, we are still planning to have a certain amount of uh, hybrid built in, uh, in case there were mitigation. And if there isn't, then it's just um, another exciting aspect to, to the program, but we're aiming to be flexible so that uh, regardless, we don't um, leave the uh, kids in the community as well as the growing number of teens and adults who participate as well uh, in the lurch without a program at all. Uh, we had a big donation that was made from Kiwanis uh, of uh, $14,000. That uh, uh, was something that Kiwanis had approached us about last spring. They do a donation um, related to youth in the community every year where they raise funds for a specific project. And they were uh, approached us last spring to see if we had anything that they could donate, to donate towards. And uh, I said, boy, how do you do we? <laughs> and I am very grateful to Eliza for uh, all of her assistance and work in creating the proposal that we sent to Kiwanis, which they accepted, as well as uh, the, the help there uh, that Eliza provided and uh, Jillian Chapman uh, as well in pulling together the images um, et cetera, that we then made available to Kiwanis to help them uh, really uh, sell this campaign, which they did successfully since uh, they met their quota. And uh, this past month, they uh, approached us about stopping by to the library for a nice ceremony uh, presenting the check. It was 
a bit of a challenge doing a, uh, a check signing, um, a check presentation ceremony during the, the time of, of COVID. Everyone there was very conscientious. So it was uh, kind of a challenge to try and take the picture and, and still maintain something like social distancing. Like, you know, you want to get close enough so everybody's in the frame, but you don't want to get too close. You can't really get in where everybody's, you know, pressed shoulder to shoulder. So um, very grateful to Kiwanis uh, as, as well. Uh, they do good work. Uh, they make fantastic pancakes every 4th of July. Uh, they tell me that they are looking forward to getting back to the pancake making uh, this coming 4th of July. So what so, is this ear, earmarked for? Oh, yes. Um, so we had uh, <clears throat> drafted the proposal to improve uh, technology within youth services. So the, the thinking being that that would then be something that would be uh, very beneficial. It is very necessary, but it's also not something that we had provided for as part of the capital campaign. So that it wouldn't be something that would, um, you know, potentially be superseded by that campaign uh, or that we were just cherry picking something um, as a portion of that. So some of the items that that includes um, some laptops so that we can do uh, something similar to what we did in adult services this past year, which is um, make those laptops available uh, for youth who want to use uh, computers instead of having desktops that are always just occupying tables so that the laptop can be provided. Any table in the department can be used uh, for work. And when someone's not working with a computer, then it can be used for something else. Uh, I believe there's some technology kits that are uh, <laughs> built into that as well. Some se there, STEM and STEAM kits for kids. STEM and STEAM kits. Which Thank will be you, um, circulating. They'll be available mm -hmm. to check out. Right. And I, my, brain, my brain is failing and me at some... the moment. The, um, game system, I believe as well. Uh, yes, we're getting a switch system um, for the library, which is for a post COVID world um, <laughs> and some iPads for in house use at the library um, that will uh, be good for preschool, the preschool set specifically. I'm sure there'll be broader use than that, but that's kind of what I'm tailoring the apps towards. Mm -hmm. Eliza, what, what are switch systems? Uh, it's a video game system. Ah. Um, and the offer. Sorry, Eliza, you go on. Uh, it just has the. You can have the most players simultaneously uh -huh. um, of any of the broadly available video game systems, therefore making it the most useful to us in a library setting. The titles tend to be a little more, um, you know, docile. They're not family friendly. They're not as first person shooter oriented. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, more Mario Kart. Grand Theft Auto, huh? Yeah, more Mario Kart, less kill everyone. Let's yeah. Last had uh, putting that whole proposal together and mm -hmm. so successfully, that's great. It was really fun, and it was really fun to see a large check. Yes. And it was a large check. They actually, Kiwanis actually, because they do this every year, uh, had printed one of those huge um, novelty checks where they can write in with a Sharpie who they're giving the money to. So. Yes, I, I physically large as well as large amount. Just curious, are those actual, large actual legal documents? No. 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 I was disappointed to find. <laughs> they gave us they a, a regular small check to deposit. Do they take that big check back with them or is that for us to display? Or Oh, they took that back. They use that every year. The whiteboard. They just went. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's an it's an enormous check shaped whiteboard. Right. When was their last gift to the library? Well, it's been quite a while. Okay, so it's not um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not aware of them having made another one anytime recently. Okay. So. And they, the, they approached uh, us. They approached us. Oh. Uh, they had they had heard that we had some needs. So. That's great. That is good. That is very good. 
Uh, other item that we're working on and spending some time as the numbers continue to improve COVID wise is continuing to reopen the, the facilities. Uh, continuing to monitor the, the number numbers and the mitigation uh, protocols that are in effect and planning out what our next steps are going to be as we move towards a full return to our regular services and hours. I am beyond delighted not to be in a situation where we can even, you know, really genuinely talk about that. So better days ahead. Otherwise, any questions on anything else in the director's report? Oh, actually, I have a question for Jillian. Is she still there? She is. I am. Um, Jillian, is there any talk in the village about um, the postponed 100, what was 125, the celebration that was supposed to be last uh, September? 25th. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, is that something that's just in, on hold indefinitely, or is there any talk no. about that? Um, so we paused our monthly meetings. I've been meeting with them for over two years now. Okay. And um, our meetings picked up again in the end of October, I believe, or November. Um, and the plan is to move ahead as if COVID doesn't exist and hope, you know, as we get closer to the actual event or even just closer to the summer, we'll have a better idea of where things are landed. So essentially, I had laid down all the groundwork for the 125 and for the board members that don't know, the library is hosting the 125th anniversary birthday bash on September 25th of 2021. It was originally scheduled for last year, September 26, 2020, and obviously it got canceled. So um, the idea or hope, and I, I emphasize hope that you know we would be able to host it this year, but basically, um, the village is providing event permits with specific guidelines, you know, so they're saying you have the potentiality of an event permit if these things are in like safety measures are in place and everything, but that would be very difficult for that kind of event. So it's more of a wait and see. Um, the but date like, is September 25th, did you say? Yes in 2021 um but like the the parade is planning on happening so we'll have a lot better idea of what the village expects um for this event with that event you know yeah. they'll be yeah. they'll be our big buffer and before that the auto show so you know there's there's a lot of large-scale events that are going to happen way before ours that would be clear indicators if this is a really bad idea or not and yeah. we the on the committee is Kathy O'Hara so you know we talk to her pretty regularly about what like the reality of the situation sure. is and stuff like that so well thank you thank you for that yeah. background mm -hmm. okay any other any other questions and thank you Jillian Okay, uh, if we don't have any other uh, items of business uh, to bring to the attention for the good of the order, then I would look for a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. Stro motions, Heinzelman seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned at 8.01 p.m. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody. Thank We're you. getting good at this. Thank you. <laughs> yep. We got this down to a system here, I think. Kathy, I'll look to you for the next executive session. Yeah. Um, Eric will send out a doodle on that. Um, and we can put our heads together, brainstorm, and, and, and get this to put together for us. So. Okay. I'm going to come up. I'm going to put together a draft and, and then, uh, get your feedback. Thanks. Thanks very much, Tricia. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good night, good night. everyone. Good night. Good night.